Okay, so section 10.4 is going to continue our work with matrices. What we're going to try and do is continue to build the a bridge between doing things by hand and doing things on a computer or a graphing calculator or similar kind of system. Now, one of the little steps, and it's kind of a baby step, is to determine whether two matrices are equal. Now, if they're equal, then by definition, each of the little parts has to be the same. So negative one, negative one, that lines up. Two and two, negative one half, and uh-oh, those don't match. Now there's actually another problem with these two matrices being equal, and that is they're different dimensions. So let's remind ourselves, what are the dimensions of this matrix? Good, a two by three, and this one's a two by two. So Right off the bat, I mean, if they're wrong dimensions, they're not going to be equal to each other, or if they don't match in their dimensions. Now, kind of following up on that one a little bit is this one. It says, find the values of A and B that make the matrices equal. Well, you know, everything looks good, except here I've got an A, and over here I've got a negative 8. So, anyone want to venture a guess as to what a has to equal, all right? A has to equal negative eight. And likewise, over here, B has to equal six. If you put those values in for A and B, these matrices would be identical, and that's what you're looking for. Now, if you do have matrices that are the same dimension, then you can add them, you can subtract them, multiply, you know, Multiply, we'll have to worry about later. But for right now, we've got this one, which has, has us do four times this matrix. Now let me show you that. That's going to be 8, 28, 0, 4, 0, 32, 0, 24, and 32 again. And then we want to add 7, 4, 8, 7, 5, 4. And somehow the, the immortal words uttered on Apollo 13, that ill-fated Apollo mission to the moon, where part of their module blew up. Somebody re radioed back from the void of space, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Just as calm as could be. I'm like, uh, I think I'd be a little bit more panicked. In any case, uh, we have a problem. This is a 3x3 three three matrix, and we can't add that to a 3x2 matrix. They have to have the same dimensions in order for you to be able to add them. So, uh, kind of a bummer, but that's okay. Now, um, depending on the dimensions of your matrix, you can do other operations. You can multiply uh, matrices, but matrices have to line up in kind of a funny way in order for you to be able to multiply them. So let's take a look at matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication. Let's have two matrices, let's say A and B. M times N, N times P. In order for us to be able to multiply two matrices, this is how they have to line up. The inner dimensions have to match. And if they do, then the product that you get will have this dimensions. So that's going to equal C, which has dimensions of M by P. Now, if these don't match, you can't multiply. That's it. In fact, your calculator will tell you that. It'll give you an error if you try and multiply things that don't have the same dimensions. So let's take a look at um, example D and see if, first of all, if we can multiply these things together. So I'm going to keep that there. And then we'll take a look at a 2 by 3 matrix. What are the dimensions of this one right here? A 3 by 2, thank you. So 2 by 3 and a 3 by 2. All right, well, D 
these match, so that's good. And then these are going to be the size of your product. So if you multiply a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2, then, well, first of all, you can do it. So let's put a little check mark there. Yeah, you can do it. And secondly, this is going to be the size of your product. In fact, it's right here. You're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. <clears throat> now, there's something funny about multiplying matrices. Let's, let's call this one A and this one B. So A times B, hey, that worked out fine, right? You can do that. You're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, the process of getting this 2 by 2 matrix is a little bit you know, challenging, but we'll work our way through it. But just out of curiosity, could we multiply B times A? Could we do that? Well, hmm. B is a 3 by 2 matrix, and A is a 2 by 3 matrix. So can we multiply B times A? Yeah. All right, I'm getting some nods here. So yeah, yes, you can. That's because these inner dimensions match. And B times A, what's the size of B times A going to equal? When I multiply these two matrices together, I'm going to get what size matrix? <laughs> this is going to be the outside outside numbers. That's okay. This is still new. I get it. Uh, it's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. Now that's weird. Can anyone tell me what's weird about this? It's something outside your experience. Even though you're not realizing it, you're like, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, it looks fine to me. Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. When we multiplied A times B, we ended up with a 2 by 2 matrix, right? But when you multiply B times A, you end up with a 3 by 3 matrix. So in other words, what we're saying is that A times B is different than B times A. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. I mean, that's forever in the day that's been like our little safety net. You could add 7 plus 8, and that's the same thing as 8 plus 7. You could multiply 7 times 8 and get the same thing as 8 times 7. You could commute things. The order that you did those things didn't matter. Subtraction is actually one place where it does matter. 7 minus 8 is not the same as 8 minus 7. So that's not commutative. But matrix multiplication is not commutative. Just not. So, in fact, look at this. You know, the one way you get a 3 by 3, the other way you get a 2 by 2 much much different now let's let's work through some of the details of matrix multiplication and for that I'm going to call this matrix C all right so we're going to call this uh, let's see a times B we'll call it matrix C and I want to give each of these elements in matrix C kind of a little bit of a label so this is going to be C, first row, first column. And this is going to be C, first row, second column. And this will be C, second row, first column. How about this last entry here? What would that be? S second row, second column. Thank you, sir. So yeah. Now when you multiply matrices, it's kind of a funny process. You're going to take the row that corresponds to this times the column from B that corresponds to this. So C11, for instance, is going to be this row times this column. And I say times, and I'm being really kind of loose with that. It's going to be 2 times 7 and then plus 7 times 8 plus 1 times negative 5. So all that just to get what goes in this cell. 
So again, it's the row from this column, the row from this matrix times the column from this matrix. So 14 plus 56 is 60, um, no, is 70, minus 5 would be uh, 65. So that would be what goes in here. So anytime you want some particular element of this matrix, you got to multiply this row from matrix A times this column from matrix B. So let's see if we can't do that again for C12. All right, so C12, that's going to be the first row of A times the second column of B. And if you want to try and pause the video, if you're watching this later, then maybe it not, might not be a bad idea. But see if you can't multiply this row times this column much the same way we did it just a minute ago. So let's see. That's going to be 2 times negative 4 plus 7 times 7 plus 1 times 4. So negative 8 plus 49 is 41 plus 4 is 45. And yay. You've got C12. Now there's two more that we need to get. I need to get C21. <clears throat> so C21, what do I have to multiply together to get C21? Is this process sinking in a little bit? So remember my corporate sponsor, I mentioned that a while back, RC Cola, right? So somehow I don't have any cash royalties from that yet, but you know we're still working on it. RC Cola, row then column. So we want the second row from matrix A times the first column from matrix B. So it's going to be 2 times 7 plus, assume not, uh, not 2, how about 8? There we go. Yeah, I can see a lot of people getting, wait a minute, <laughs> sorry. 8 times 7 plus 6 times 8 plus 8 times negative 5. So that's going to be 56, um, 56 plus 8, 64. Let's just double check that. 56 plus 48 minus 40, 64. All right, looking good there. So that would be your 64. The last one is going to be C22. And that's going to be second row, second column. So 8 times negative 4 plus 6 times 7 plus 8 times 4. Okay, so that should be 42. And I'll put in a 42 there, and that's my product. Now, I'll be very honest with you. I'm kind of a little divided about how much of this I really want you to be able to do by hand. Uh, I think probably what will happen on an exam is I'll give you a, a problem about this size. Notice that if I wanted to be mean, I could switch the order here, and then you'd have to do a 3x3 three three matrix, would be a lot more of a pain. So generally, I'd probably be more user-friendly than this. But I have no problem showing you how to do this on the calculator, and it's the calculator that we're really trying to edge closer to. So let's take a look at that. So let me clear up a bunch of this stuff, and I'll clear here. Okay, so let's think. Let's put in our matrices A and B. Remember where to go to get your matrix? That's the second key, then the matrix key, or the X inverse key. And the first thing you want to do is edit that. So go over to the edit menu first, and then press enter. 
Matrix A had dimensions of 2 by 3. So I'll adjust those, 2, enter, 3, enter. And now just type in those elements, 2, 7, 1, that's the first row, and then 8, 6, and 8 is the second row. When you're done with that, it puts you back in the upper left hand corner, but you can quit. Just hit the second key and then the mode key, quit. You're done editing that, you want to get out of that menu, and then go back in and edit matrix B. So let's clear this out so you can kind of follow along a little bit. Second, X inverse, then go over to edit. This time I want to go down to B. You can either type the number 2 or go down and press enter. It works the same way. B is a 3 by 2 matrix. 3, enter, 2, enter. So this time I want to type in a 7, negative 4, 8, and 7, and then negative 5 and 4. Like our last one, you're going to hit the second key, then the mode key to quit, exit out of there. And you might just be curious and say, well, you know, I kind of want to look at my matrices and make sure I typed them incorrectly. So if you wanted to do that, then the simple thing to do is to hit the second key and then the matrix key and type whatever matrix you want. If you want to see A, type the 1, press enter. There's matrix A. Matrix A. Does it match what we're supposed to have? Yeah, looks good. I can repeat this with matrix B. This time I'll hit a 2 and press enter. So looking good. Now, let's test something out here. Let's let our calculator do the work for us. So I'll hit second, matrix A, enter. You don't need to hit the times key. If you have two matrices next to each other with nothing between them, it's going to understand that, oh, I want you to multiply this by the other matrix. So I'll just type in matrix B, second matrix, and then the number two, and bam. And looks pretty good. Seems to match exactly what we got right here. So perfect. Now for giggles, let's show you that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Something that we've already established, if we did B times A, we should get a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> so back up here, second matrix, 2, second matrix, one. So B times A. And bam, wow, that's a lot different. I mean, you know, the order does matter here in general. There are a couple specific cases where, you know, you can multiply in either order, but that's the exception, not the rule. But when it does happen, that generally means something interesting. Okay, uh, let's take a look at example E. Any questions on the previous example? No? Okay. Can we multiply these together? Well, let's first look at the dimensions of these matrix. This is a 3 by 2, and this is a 3 by 2. Can we multiply these matrices together? No. You don't have to go any farther than this those two dimensions are not equal. So you can't. Now, I'm not sure what WebAssign is going to ask you to, to put there, but for me, you can just say, all right, well, the dimensions don't match. Hmm. OK. Let's practice one more by hand, and that'll be example F. Let's hope we can do this one three rows, two columns. How about this one? What are the dimensions of that matrix? Two by, one. two by one. So 
can we actually do this one? Yeah, those match. What's the size of the product going to equal? So it's going to end up, we'll call it matrix C, is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. Okay, not bad. So let me draw a little 3 by 1 matrix right here. And this is going to be C, which is dimensions of 3 by 1. So I'm going to label these. It's going to be C, first row, first column. And then what comes below that? C, uh, second row, first column. And C, third row, first column. And the reason I'm writing that is to try and help guide you as to how you multiply and get these elements of this matrix. These little indices here are reminding you exactly what we need to put together. First row, first column. So first row, first column, and I want to give that a shot. What's that going to be? What numbers am I going to multiply together? 2 times 7 plus 7 times 4. And then second row, first column. 1 times 7 plus 8 times 4. And finally, 6 times 7 plus 8 times 4. So it's going to be 14 plus 28, that's 40. 7 plus 32 is 39. 42 and 32 is going to be 74. There you go. There's your 3 by 1 matrix. Nice. Now, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of enthusiasm for making you do lots of these matrix multiplications by hand. You'll probably get something like this as simple as one of these but make sure you can show me the work this is what I want to see or up here something like this all right and of course I've already taught you how to enter these and how to check it so you can make sure you get it right just make sure that you can show me the work all right now let's keep going with some more problems along this line there's other things we can do with matrices. Eventually, we're going to solve systems of equations. But we're going to get there kind of slowly. So for instance, uh, in this case, A and B are the same dimensions. So that allows us to add and subtract these kinds of problems. So let's see if we can't solve for x here. Well, I'll move B to the other side and get 2x equals B minus A. And then I still need to get x by itself, so I can multiply both sides by, say, 1 half. Now 1 half times 2 is going to cancel, and so that's going to leave me with x equals 1 half b minus a. Alright, but what does all that mean, b minus a, 1 half of b minus a? Well, let me show you kind of by hand first and then maybe we can do it on a calculator next all right so by hand first I want to calculate this expression one half B minus a so it's going to be one half now that's a constant what I have here are matrices so I've got six eight seven and four minus two seven 1, 8. When you're subtracting these things, you're just going to subtract them piecewise. So, now I guess I don't need parentheses and brackets here. Let's get rid of that. So, there we go. We'll just deal with the brackets. 
So 6 minus 2 is going to be 4, 7 minus 8 is going to be 1, 7 minus 1 is going to be 6, and 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Now I want to take half of that. So this, this half has to multiply each of the elements of this matrix one at a time. So half of that is going to equal 2, 1 half, 3, and negative 2. And that's your solution for x right there. If you take the time to put this into a calculator, then it gets even easier because your calculator can do all that kind of stuff. So let me show you how to do that. So let's clear this stuff out. And I'm going to go enter those two matrices. First one I want to do is matrix A. And that's going to be a 2 by 2. And its elements were 2, 7, 1, 8. When you're done editing that, exit. Don't try and jump to the next screen. Just get out of here. Now let's go enter matrix B. Go over to edit first. Then down to matrix B. Matrix B is going to again be a 2 by 2. If you're going to add or subtract matrices, they have to have the same dimension. Period. Your calculator will pleasantly remind you of that if you forget it. So let's put in matrix B, 6, 8, 7, and 4. Oops. How about 4? There we go. Let's clear all this stuff out. Now I just want the expression for x. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 0.5 times parentheses b minus a. Now b minus a has to be matrix b, so you've got to go to the matrix menu. b minus second matrix a. And if you're looking at that going, oh, I'm terrible with decimals. I just am. It's okay. Hit the math key and then press enter twice. It'll turn your decimals into fractions where possible. Okay, so Beautiful. Kind of matches exactly what we got just a minute ago. Okay. Uh, do you want to repeat that for a different example? You want to repeat that process and solve for x here with some different matrices, or I think you're good. It's up to you. Seeing people shrug, we're good. Yeah, we can't multiply these, but you can subtract them. All right. So, uh, actually, you know what? Actually, you know, B and D, B and D are different dimensions. So, you wouldn't actually be able to solve for x here, because once you did two times this minus two x, B and D are just different dimensions. So this one won't work. So we can just stop right there. So. So cool. We we did it, but we didn't do it. You know, <laughs> it's a nice compromise on that one. Um, this is kind of cool. One of the things you can do with a matrices is you can multiply them by themselves. Now that's only going to work if it's a square matrix. If it's not a square matrix, you won't be able to square it. So let's take a look at this one. And boy, you're going to be really, really, really glad you have a graphing calculator on something like this. Let's enter matrix A. It's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So 3, enter, 3, enter. Let me clear out all this stuff. I'll probably clear it out again. Now I need to enter 0 0.4, 1.1, 2.4, 0.7, negative 0 0.1, 0 0.9, negative 0 0.7, 0 0.4, and 
negative 0.8. Now I'm trying to count up. I think there would be 27 multiplications and all kinds of additions. And of course, all the adding and subtracting of numbers that have decimals in them, if you were to do this by hand. But we're not going to do it by hand. Let's exit out of here, as we usually do. Second, then the mode key. Now clear out this. I want to square that matrix. So I'll hit the matrix button, matrix A. And this is so cool. Just hit the square key. And there's a square of that matrix. If WebAssign asks you for fractions, no big deal. Hit the math key, and then press answer to fractions, and there you go. Done. That's pretty sweet. Actually, there's some nice, really nice features in Desmos that make this even easier, but unfortunately, the matrix part of Desmos doesn't come through on test mode, so teaching it really wouldn't help you out that much. Okay, let's kind of wrap this up with two more examples. And that is, write the system equations as a matrix equation. Now this is different than an augmented matrix. So an augmented matrix, you just write down all the coefficients of these numbers and then these numbers, and you'd be done. You'd have one matrix. But in a, a matrix system of equations, you're going to write it as A x equals B. And I'm writing capital X because all of these are matrices. And I want to kind of highlight that. This isn't the usual X that you're dealing with. These are all A, B, and X are matrices. So how would that look? Well, let's start out with matrix A is going to be the matrix of coefficients. So in this case, A would be 2, negative 7, and 1, 8, what should I put for the coefficient of Y here? That would be a 0 and 6, and then 0, 8, negative 7 like that. Okay, not so bad. Uh, now, that's matrix A. Our vector or column matrix X is just going to be these variables. It's going to be X, Y, and Z. And matrix B is going to be the right hand side. 13, 8, and 7. Oops, didn't realize I'd gotten off the screen. So if you write this as AX equals B, then it's a shorthand way, or maybe not a shorthand way, it's a different way to write this system of equations. Let's actually look and see that it works. All right, so let me write this all the way down here. So. 2, negative 7, 1, 8, 0, 6, 0, 8, and negative 7, x, y, and z equals 13, 8, and 7. Let's look at the dimensions here and see if they line up the way that we want them to. So the first matrix, what we call matrix A, that's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. What are the dimensions of this matrix? Three by one. 3 by 1. So they match. And when I multiply these things together, the size of my product is going to be what? going to get a 3 by 1 matrix. In fact, we can do that. We can get that matrix. It would exactly be 
2 times x minus 7 times y plus z and then 8x plus 6z and 8y minus 7z and that's going to equal 13, 8, and 7. Now this is a 3 by 1 matrix and this is a 3 by 1 matrix. They're only going to equal if their corresponding parts are equal, which is exactly what we had up here. So, in other words, it's a different way to write our system of equations, is to write it with these matrices. By the way, just a reminder uh, of what not to do. The wrong answer in something like this is an augmented matrix. An augmented matrix for this one would be 2, negative 7, 1, 13, 8, 6, 8, uh, I should put a 0 here, 0, 8, negative 7, and 7. This is an augmented matrix, much different than what we have over here. Now sometimes people put a little dashed line down here or even a solid line there, that's fine. But this is your augmented matrix. Hopefully this will be some easy points for you on a test. Write the system of equations as a matrix equation. Just this right here. That's all there is to it. If you write an augmented matrix, um, you're going to be unhappy. And so am I. So try and keep those things straight. Let's finish it up with this one right here. Uh, it says write the system of equations as a matrix equation. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, what I want you to notice is that we've got four variables and three equations. So I'm trying to think how I want to set this up. Um, our vector x is going to be this, x1, x2, x3, x4. And our system of equations is going to be 0, 5, 3. And we're kind of missing one here. So we're just going to put in a 0. And over here, i got to put in all the coefficients. So those coefficients would be 4, 7, negative 9, and 8, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. 0, 4, 1, negative 1. Now I've done these three equations, but if you're looking at things and saying, well, wait a minute, this is, right now, it's a 3 by 4 matrix. Well, I guess we could multiply it by a, a 4 by 1, but we should get something like this. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to put in that that bottom row of zeros or not. Let me put in that bottom row of zeros and then think back if we need it. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. You've got a 4x4 four four matrix times a 4x1 matrix. So that product will be a 4x1 a matrix. Um, you can, let's see, can we get away with doing it without that fourth one? I think we can. Let's check. 4, 7, negative 9, 8, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, negative 1, multiplied by um, x1, x2, x3, x4. So this is three rows and four columns. This is four rows and one column. So those match. And we should end up with a three by one matrix. So yeah, I guess I didn't need that extra row of zeros there. Not that it harms anything. And what you'll find out in the next section 
is that uh, it's only square matrices that are what are called invertible. All right, so I'm guessing that WebAssign is going to expect this one, not this one. We don't really need that extra equation there. Nice, nice. Comments or thoughts on that one? Okay, that's a wrap for section, uh, what was it, that was 10.4, yeah, good deal.